Welcome to this week's edition of News 6. Today's program is brought to you by the 6th grade class of Union Middle School. Our school is located in the community of Upper Sandusky in Wyandotte County. Founded in 1848, Upper Sandusky has a population of 6,600 people. It's been said that a picture is worth 10,000 words. And when it comes to images from our past, the pictures might be worth even more. Reporter Abby Kinsley has found a collection of old photographs that have special meaning to our town. Hi, I'm Abby Kinsley, and today I'm looking at the history of Upper Sandusky. Harry Kinley was a photographer who took many pictures of Upper Sandusky in the early 20th century. Today his pictures show us what life used to be like in this area. He photographed the streets, the, the courthouse, the points of interest, people, places, things. He documented things that were no longer going to be available for people to see later. Today, Harry Kinley's granddaughter, Linda Getz, helps preserve his photos for future generations. There is approximately a thousand photos, and the negatives are at the Ohio Historical Society in Columbus, and I have the photographs in my possession. Some of my favorites are the ones with people in them, and especially the children. Harry's photographs are probably more important today than when he originally took them. I think it's important to remember how things were and to see how things were in the olden days. How people dressed, what they did, where they went, all the, what the buildings looked like in the old times. I believe it's important for a community to know about its history so that it can see how things were and to learn from those things. This is Abby Kinsley reporting for News 6. Today we have many ways to enjoy music. Thanks to technology, we can even turn our computers into musical instruments. But reporter Christina Meinhardt has found a man who would rather create music in a more unusual way. Hi, I'm Christina Meinhardt, and I've met someone who makes work sound like music. For most people, a saw is just another tool, but for Henry Vent, it is a thing of beauty. I've played since 1938, and there was a man who played the saw, and I uh, enjoyed the number that he played, and I thought maybe I could learn how to do that. I play all kinds of music, some not too fast, some with a little speed to it. Listening to Henry, it's hard to believe that he never had a lesson. Well, after I'd seen this man play the saw, I figured that uh, I ought to be able to do it. And I uh, got my dad's distin and my violin bow, and I took it out in the shop. It's difficult. It takes a lot of uh, practice. We asked Henry to show us how he makes different sounds with his saw. You, uh, you get your low notes down here and your high notes up here. And we start out like... You have to have the bow rosined well, and the back of the saw has to be perfectly clean, or you'll miss notes. This is Christina Meinhardt reporting for News 6. How do you feel about those Beanie Baby dolls? I like Beanie Babies, especially the farm animals. I like Beanie Babies and I would like to collect them all. I don't like Beanie Baby dolls because it's a fad that will be gone pretty soon. I don't like Beanie Babies because I think they are a waste of money. I don't like Beanie Babies because I think they look goofy. 
I like painting babies, especially the monkey. Welcome to Union School. This is our library where we check out books. This is our channel where we have museum classes. This is our cafeteria where we eat. Thanks for visiting our school. In the 19th century, our country fought a terrible civil war. But today, there are people who enjoy reliving civil war battles. Reporter Tim Crock found one such man right in our own backyard. Hi, I'm Tim Crock, and today we're going to meet someone who enjoys living in the past. Since 1988, David Fadley has participated in Civil War reenactments around the country. Civil War reenactments may take place anywhere. Uh, they're even as far away as England, but many of them take place near or on some of the original battlefields, most of which were in this eastern and southeastern part of the United States. My regiment is the 13th Virginia, Company H. And the reason I chose the Confederate side is because at a reenactment, I found that the Confederates were more laid back in their camp atmosphere, and I enjoyed that fact. David was a teacher for 30 years, and he says that being a reenactor is a way to teach outside the classroom. What's that thing draped across your throat? This? Yeah. This is my blanket roll. I think the biggest thing is that we show the public how soldiers live during that time period and they're able to interact with us and ask questions about the Civil War times. A uh, soldier uh, such as the way I am dressed would have his main items be his military equipment, his rifle, his cartridges, his caps, uh, a bag that was called a haversack to carry uh, personal items in, a canteen, and a blanket roll. Anything that an infantry soldier would want to carry, he had to carry for himself. Even though the Civil War ended over 130 years ago, interest in the war is as strong as ever. I think we can learn as much as anything about appreciating the past and what the men and women of that time period had to go through as they either fought in the war or were at home in the war effort. I think it's also good that we keep their memories alive so that we will learn from the past and maybe not make those mistakes in the future. This is Tim Crock reporting for News 6. That's all for this edition of News 6. Be sure to watch next week when News 6 will be brought to you by the 6th grade class of Continental Elementary. Bye!